Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stone Face Reactions. I'm Theta, this is Lessons, and we're here for episode 27 of SDF Macross. Uh, before anything else, though, let's just take a quick look at the board. Make sure nothing uh, that's changed is missing, or is missing has been changed. Do you spot anything off the top of your head? Um, well, I guess it's a white moon. Let me see. Yeah, I guess it should be a the... white line between. By the way, I've just realized uh, this uh, mistake I've been probably making the whole time. He's Britai in Robotech, isn't he? Yeah, but all, there is Britai in Robotech and also in the translation. They and even actually, actually, they actually used to call him Britai in the do they in the okay. Japanese. Yeah. I was watching like the very start of a Robotech breakdown because I wanted to see where like they introduced the other shows as elements or something, and yeah. then they instantly just jump into a. And in Robotech, this is what happens. I'm like, fuck, stop the video! <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! But I, as far as I got, they're like they call him Pretai. It's like, oh, maybe I should yeah. be calling him Krinak this whole time. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. There should be white lines now instead of red, right? Between global and Britai. Well, I guess technically and also at, Yeah. Well, it should be a red line to Bodolza. Because now right. they switch sides. Also yeah. the pilot, right? Yeah, Quasim. Quamsin. And yeah. now you know why I call him the pilot guy. Yeah. All right. White. I guess I could leave them red because we don't know what their their conceit is on this whole thing. Um, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I only half lined it red. What about her, uh, Morak? Uh, I think she's also green. Well, she's uh, she should be white with a brie tie, but yeah, certainly red with both uh bulldozer because she sided with him with the brie tie did she i thought uh, she was like yeah. on the fence because she no, like, no, don't no, they she hang up with brie tie and then she's still talking to quamsum no quamsum quamsum is like quamsum just just leaves oh right yeah like, yeah. He yeah he hangs up on brie he 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 hangs up on brie tie and or brie tie hangs up on him it's like yeah i didn't i wasn't counting on you anyway you're you know you're a loose cannon so who cares all right uh, who else changes? Uh, I guess these guys. I don't know. They're Ilya. defectors. Uh, at least get the defector yeah. get trio. Are they? Would they still be white with Brie Tai? I guess so. They're on the same side. They're not fighting anymore. But right. Well, I mean, you know, they but... defected, but he's still yeah. his own side too. Mm -hmm. So technically, they're against him, but on the same side. I guess it's hard to tell. What do you do with a defector? When the, the people you defected from are also sort of your ally now? Because <laughs> you are technically yes, a different side. I mean, they're, as defectors, I guess they're on the Macross side. And if they're, and he's allied with the Macross, then, you know. Well, I don't I know. Mean, Remember, uh, we white lined him to global, so. Yeah, it should be white lines. I don't think that's going to be much of a issue. Right oh, there. I've got to make these off white because it's crossing up with um, what's his name? The guy I thought was gonna rebel. Maestroff. I'm still surprised that Maestroff did not rebel, which I guess makes that a green line. That's a change. He really got in a huff and walked out of that room and. Then did nothing about it. Actually, I think he changed. She changed. Well, he changed attitudes once he met uh, Exodol and and everyone else. It's like, oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, I didn't, ex was told. I didn't expect him to go that far. Like he marched out of the room. No, we're not going to take these defectors. And then marched back into the room to meet another guy. It's like what? I mean, I think he marched out of protest not necessarily that he you know was like he was he wasn't going that far right he wasn't defying orders or anything like that he was more like 
Yeah, well, if you're gonna make this mistake, don't make it with me. Yeah, I I'm guess. Gonna make it with you. It just yeah. really felt like a "we'll see about this" march out, and not a "I'll show you" march out. I don't know. I guess it's words. Words are hard. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any other changes? I've already blue lined um, Genus and uh, Mila. Mila, yeah. Added the Mila. purple to represent Mila. the romance. Mila, yeah. Uh, I guess that's everything, right? Pretty much. Yoshio hasn't shown back up in a couple episodes. No, Yoshiro is... No, Yoshio. I don't know that's why I say Yoshiro. He has no R in it. I think he showed or up the... a little bit in in the arcade. He showed up in the arcade, and that was it. Yeah, so he's had a couple episodes. He hasn't... He, I guess he... He showed up, I guess like, he... once in the second episode, then 30 ep... No, not 30 episodes, like, 20 episodes later... I guess you can put the Breach Bunnies uh, romancing the. Oh shoot! I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, at least they're dating. I guess I don't know. Hanging uh, out. Something is being implied there. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to be the final edit then. So I'll do that one between, since that's going to be involving a lot more line creation. <laughs> All right. How about you go ahead and tell us then what happened last time. Wow, what happened last time? It's a big episode. Episode 26, Messenger. Essentially, Exodo Fomo uh, attempts to have negotiations with the Macross because of the effects of what happened in the previous episode where a lot of Centrali essentially uh, were part of uh, Britai's fleet uh, were uh, stopped fighting, right? And so he's trying to find a way to end the battle. Otherwise, his fleet is going to be turned apart between those who might want to fight and those who don't. Uh, in the process, they receive orders that their big boss, the, the you know commander of all uh, Zentradi, has decided that he's going to kill everyone, including the so-called infected Zentradi who have been infected with culture. So now uh, at, at Britai, through Exodus, says, we have no choice. We fight or we die, right? Famous last words. Um, and now they sided with each other. The UN, on the other hand, uh, Misa saying, "Hey, hey, listen, they they're defecting. We can, you know, we can side with them." It's like, no, no, we still have the the Grand Canyon. We're still going to use it no matter what, right? Um, and then we're going to try to negotiate. But it turns out that maybe they may not have a chance either way, because the full might of Centrati has just jumped into Earth orbit, and uh, well, things are. I think they're going to take a turn. Oh, that's right. Sure. Now I remember my problem. The fact that their entire fleet jumps into, like, Earth orbit, and the Macross and the other Zentradi fleet are closer to space than they are to Earth. Like, I do not understand how the Zentradi aren't going to win this fight. Like, literally, they just, all right, we're here. Turn. Fire. It's done. Let's, let's fold back. I guess the fold systems all have bubbles around them too, which would be, you can't be too close to another ship, otherwise you're going to fold them in half. Yeah. That's just a logistics thing that entered my head. They're, obviously it's not a concern I have for this fight, because they all folded in, so assumedly they're already equally distant from each other. Uh, Yeah, otherwise we had, what, Mila an episode ago, showing how to defeat the balls in one hit without killing anybody. Shoot him in the balls, she says. <laughs> right between the legs. Ah, that Mila is the worst part of all of this, I think. Not because she's bad. She had an interesting character in the arcade. That was like the most we've ever gotten of her. And then they instantly said she should have no agency anymore. That Mila character, she's fine at all, but you know what she needs? She needs to be defined by a man. Look, I'm not the one who wrote the show. Send all complaints to a now. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> send all complaints to a now defunct company that originally wrote the show, or to perhaps the forward them to Harmony Gold. <laughs> like they haven't heard heard that before. Well, I'm sure they didn't change anything for the better. That's not what I hear no. about Robotech. It's how yeah. they changed everything for the better. Uh. uh really so yeah 
other than that, I guess in our future we have Zentradi idols to look forward to. Fulmo's got a leg up on everybody. Uh, anything else uh, to go over before we start the episode? No, I'm looking forward to watching this episode. And uh, also reminders that if you want to see this episode live and uninterrupted with no um, cuts, you better check out the Patreon because you get the best experience there. Go ahead. There you go. Well, let's go ahead and get into it then. Interesting note about the uh, show is that I noticed it also keeps to the, I guess, 80s to maybe early 90s time format, which is a 25-minute episode. Yeah. Because I was watching uh, Fearin with uh, Justin earlier today, and I saw an episode was 24 minutes in length, and I'm like, oh, this is shorter than the rest, isn't it? Then I double-checked, it's like, no, all those episodes of Fearin are 24 minutes. 24 or 30, and I, technically. And, and unlike... American shows, it only has basically one spot where it breaks for commercials, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know modern uh, Japanese television versus 80s Japanese television. But what I was actually yeah. doing, I was comparing it against Crest of the Stars, which I had also recorded earlier that night, which is a 90s-ish anime, which is also 25-minute length that anime. Uh, I think the average in the U.S. was about 22 minutes with more commercial breaks. You know, it's been so long since I've watched a American TV show that wasn't an hour long that I don't yeah. remember the half an hour long shows. You know, it's like watching uh, Outer Limits versus Twilight Zone back in the day. Do you yeah. want your you want your weird fiction in a half an hour format or hour format? Was it 20,000 ships? No, 4 million. I was close. Yes. Was it Britai's fleet is 20,000, though, isn't it? 12,000, 12, I think, or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I don't even lose the Price is Right rules. <laughs> wait for me. You had arm and arm. You're moving at the same speed. I'm glad you're not marrying your cousin. This is the appropriate sound for this. Yeah. There's two uses for this uh, violin solo. Yeah. You're about to summon Beetlejuice, or you're telling Minmei you loved her. Oh, they upped the animation on this one, definitely. By the way, in the time span that we've spent doing all of this, Earth is dead. Earth should have been shot by now. By the way, was that our first time seeing the internals of one of these guys? Yeah. Oh, that's... Wow. That's why we don't move them very much. I'm sorry, did we get Fulmo a... <laughs> Macross uniform? I... Yeah, remember, he was just wearing a sackcloth, basically. Yeah, but it looks like we, like, we brought him on board. I mean, you know what I mean. I mean, he has to coordinate, I guess. Yeah, sure, I guess. He's the main guy here. Oh, they're still jumping in. Oh, there's millions of ships. Yeah, but I mean, why would... Alright, first set on here. Let's open fire. グランドキャノン銀海まであと 
第18および27戦闘中隊は A4 エリアへの展開を急げ了解ハムはもう一度、ジャンプしたのに。私は、もう一度、ジャンプしたのに。私は、もう一度、ジャンプしたのに。私は、もう一度、ジャンプしたのに。私は、もう一度、ジャンプしたのに。私は、もう一度、ジャンプしたのに。私I'm sorry, music score guy. I don't think you <laughs> understand the tenseness of the scene. Oh, that thing can fold. I don't know why you'd fold that thing here, though. Oh, they can all do a macross. ごめんね、ヒカリ。でも私、やっぱりカイフのこと。オタクのせいじゃないよ。僕がいつもはっきりしなかったから。でも、いいのさ、ミンメ。僕は、well, I'm glad we're finally figuring out who's for who. でも、おかしなもんだね。この小さなこんなに違うなんてさ。What is with the super drop on her face though? Oh no, Arma 2, not again! Holy fuck! Yeah. I mean, you don't typically pull like a. Oh man, those buildings got destroyed a second time? <laughs> those are literally the same buildings that got destroyed when the cross crashed. Yeah. I literally did not think they were actually going to win. I was being flippant because I didn't think it was going to happen. I take it back. I give props to Macross. I didn't think they'd have the balls to destroy the Earth. Oh, get her on a radio right now. You can infect four million ships all at once. Like, what do you think those would do for enemy, uh, for good side morale? These people would fucking die for Minway. Imagine if they see her crying. The same exact idea Kaifun had. That was a question about back of the head. Are they deep enough to have survived? Clearly, the answer is yes. Yeah, time to fuck those guys back. ボドル機関艦隊の兵士たちはプロトカルチャーの実態を知りません。そこで彼女の歌を流せば、彼らはカルチャーショックを受けて一時的に背を指揮系統を混乱させることができるはずです。その混乱に乗じてボドルの機関
連絡は一応注意から聞きました彼のアイデアをもとにして作戦準備を進めています歌ってくれるのですな我々のためにええ私でお役に立てるならうんそれともう一つお願いがあるのだがあの映画の中に出ていた男と例のキスというものをやってもらえませんかええす,すいませんよりじっちゃせにプロファーティーに心理的ショックを与えるにはあれが一番効果的なのです。あれが一番効果的なのです。ああ、そう。あれが一番効果的なのです。ああ、そう。あれが一番効果的なのです。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、そう。ああ、Yeah, right. The first time a dead planet fought back. Kilometers down, was it? Four or five, a couple of kilometers, I don't know. I don't remember how long. I don't think they're going to survive long now that、uh, they know they're there. Well, I don't know. We only seen them able to destroy the surface, right? So, even if all their blasts are like the equivalent of nukes, you still got to blow through tons of surface layer. Oh, things are happening fast. Well, I mean, we only have one yeah, the first half of the show, we destroyed the Earth. Or, you know, human civilization upon it, rather. Though I am surprised because the example of them destroying a world that they gave before turned, like, the whole planet gray. Like, they evaporated the oceans, and our oceans are still here. It's a g a n on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're back to the one song that we know. See, I thought we wanted to get on with something a little bit more sad. Like the whole Earth song she was singing a moment ago. Oh man, he must be the prize of that ship. So <laughs> <laughs>、oh, you got me. I know you, you must be thinking what I'm thinking. Yeah, I know. Look, I don't want to be that guy. But you know, this is the start of a hentai. Because <laughs> the first step is clearly, it's working, keep going! Hey, Car, you literally got work to do. Really? The second song you're gonna go with is the movie theme? Because we know she's got other songs. Oh, they gave her their own Valkyrie, yeah. Well, that's what I said before, she should be. Give her some agency. God damn, she's like the best t h a t Trotty pilot there is. It's a very messiah. Plus, singing them the movie theme is gonna 
We already know they don't know the reference. That's the Gundam sound. Sorry, did you just die? Yeah, I'm sorry. Here in the end, I discovered that I was wrong. I thought it was going to take him a lot longer to, to plow through kilometers of dirt, though. How did... Oh, come on. He ate, like, what, 17 missiles there. Does the music sound good? Yes. Do the lyrics make sense? No. No. <laughs> Remember, this is a moment after she said, I like my cousin more than you. Sayonara. To the backdrop of all of humanity dying. Jesus, even the whole control panel's all fucked up. Man, this is like a reverse Ryber situation, except I'm still alive down here. So I just don't know where the show can go from here, because I'm so used to shows that have a status quo that needs to be maintained. There's no fucking Earth anymore, basically. Wait, didn't you leave? Apparently. Left, but still listening. How did you get a command with that nickname? You know who we need to promote? I don't know what his real name is. They go by Ally Killer? Yeah. How do they make a movie after this? Like, the movie is supposed to be a retelling of everything, right? So we yeah. end it with, and then we all died. Sorry, if I, uh, TV in the audience, it's just because I'm laughing a lot. It's because it's so crazy what's going on. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. My emotions are overwhelmed, and it's filling it with laughter. <laughs> By the way, hasn't the atmosphere been burnt away? You guys should really be concerned about your oxygen levels here. No, I don't think the atmosphere got burned away. I think if you blast away the entire surface of the planet, you've burnt through the atmosphere you shot through, and there's nothing left creating an atmosphere. 
Well, you're not going back to space now, are you? Not what I thought was going to happen. I thought they were going to shoot it with the beams. As big as this place is, it can't like invade it too, too much. Fuck this guy up and play blank. Imagine if Independence Day ended this way. Yes, I know they have legs and not wheels, so that shouldn't have been the sound yeah. of them stopping. Yeah, but still. It's like, thanks, audio guy. Yeah. Yeah. We are on episode 27, right? I didn't download the wrong video. This no, is in episode is, 836. Yeah. yeah. Like, if the sun rose on the horizon and they just those two looked off, I would expect the show to be over. Oh, here comes the sun. From now on, I'm going to call you Sarah, and I'm going to be Shin. Hey, this Valkyrie looks a lot like a bird, doesn't it? Yeah, but I don't think the world has the infrastructure left now to fix it. Appreciates the situation. Oh, he got a serious, a serious case of Roy face. Like, yeah, look now how I'm bad serious. the Macross looks. Like I said, there's no one left to repair it. I don't care how great the miracle workers are. There's no infrastructure to refine metal. Oh, but never mind, we're good again. Roy's back. Oh, I, I, you know, I noticed that the, the narrator is Claudia's voice. Claudia's voice actress is a narrator. How long has that been going on? Yeah, forever, I suppose. But I just, oh, I I just clicked was... right. Oh, never mind. I'm thinking of the wrong show. I was about to say, I thought it was me for this whole time, but I'm actually thinking no, of... No. I'm actually thinking of Gundam Seed, where it's uh, yeah. one of the characters uh, 
which is also mm-hmm. a bridge officer. Yeah. Because, yeah. It's like, I, I was like, wait a minute. When finally, when she was like, you saw the moving the hands. Like, wait a minute, that sounds like Claudia's voice. So I guess it's her voice actress that does the narrating. By the way, next episode is my album. This one. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm expecting some sort of clip show because we just saw Roy again. Also, mm-hmm. the skies outside the window were blue. I don't think you can reduce the surface of the Earth to ash and still get blue skies. I mean, it is the 80s. Who the hell knows what, what science we're working with here. Because even if you debate that the uh, atmosphere hasn't been just blown away by all of this, that I assume that the Earth is a gray ash now is because everything burnt up in laser fire, right? Which means it's the worst atomic winter you could ever think of. I'm using the word atomic in this aspect just to, to give the sense of everything that's supposed to burn in like a nuclear winter. Yeah. Yeah, we shouldn't have blue skies. This should be... I don't know. <laughs> this is awful. Yeah. This is I awful. mean, I've been hold, holding my tongue because I knew what was going to happen. It was like, you know, like, oh, they're going to attack and they're going to do this. And I'm like, I don't want to say anything because I'm going to ruin it. But yeah, this was the episode um, that... This is the episode everything kind of changes. Uh, again, there's still some spoilers left. Um... Well, I don't and... know what can be spoiled at this point. Well, I mean, not, obviously a lot can be spoiled. Don't take that comment or sense of invitation to <laughs> do anything. I just mean, there's a very few operating polities left, right? There's the Zentradi. I don't know where they can go now. Well, obviously, they were only siding with us as a moment of not to be destroyed. But do they keep siding with us now because they got nowhere else left? Or that they want to keep yeah. Minmay alive? Or whatever the entirety of human politics is what's ever left on the macross and we Mm -hmm. saw that the city got fucking blown up somehow which i mean look you ever since the first missile in what episode three penetrated the ship and then somehow didn't suck everybody out into space that's been a concern on my mind. How do you blow up those things without blowing up giant holes in the ship that sucks out 50,000 civilians? I mean, they were showing some kind of shelter. So, you know, like, hey, remember the civilians? They're they're not in the city right now. Yeah, they're not to be seen in this episode. <laughs> anyway, anyway, 50,000 people, I assume, is what's left with maybe some survivors on Earth. I don't know how. Maybe... See, the problem is is that basically we saw them, my argument, right, was why don't they just open fire the minute they fold in and just reinforce that fire on the Earth with every ship that appears. No, they waited till every ship was in position and opened fire all at once, which means nobody had warning to get into bunkers. So the only people that yeah. would be in bunkers were people that lived in bunkers. <laughs> so... Or people, I guess, that were building bunkers at the time. You know, I don't know what percentage of population of the human population of eight. I'm going to say 70, uh, 80s, right? So, what, six billion people at the time? Probably. Or eight billion now. It's a really steep graph. I'm going to say six billion off the top of my head. What percentage of the human population of Earth, six billion at the time, worked in or around bunkers? So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, there's not much left on Earth to be picked up, and they Pretty were much. showing everything getting fucking destroyed, which means there's no infrastructure left. The only infrastructure is what's in space. Plus, the Armit Two got destroyed again. I think they had more of those ships, basically. Yeah, yeah, but there's always an Armit Two, apparently. <laughs> yeah. If it's not true, it's just a funny joke that I'm going to keep going. The fact that we those ships suck. <laughs> they don't, they've they not survived a single fight. Oh, man. There's so much to unravel here. Or the whole timeline of, yeah, I do really like Kai Food more than you. Now kiss me, you fool. <laughs> what is going on in this romance? It's not even yeah, a romance like anymore. I, that's, that's why that's the weakest part, at least for me, of the whole show. It's just... 
Well, I mean, it's, it, all over the place. it's gotta be your favorite part because it finally ra- uh, not unravels, it finally wraps itself up. We've all decided where we're at. It's no longer a triangle square rhombus thing. Let me see, how many episodes do we have left? Ele- nine. <laughs> Eleven. Nine is what I meant to say. Uh, we'll see about that. How do you form what? Is Kaifun gonna decide? To, you know what? I'm not in my cousin anymore. It's time to hit on Misa. That woman really seemed to have a thing for me the first time we crossed eyes across the room. Yeah, that would be a fucked up way to travel. Just to, you know, I got everything I wanted. I'm not happy anymore. Time to fuck up another relationship. Ugh. I mean, the, the thing is with anime is I fully expect. Everybody that anybody had somebody cared about on Earth is going to fucking show up as a survivor. Like, we're going to pan back over to China and Min Mei's parents are going to crawl out of the rubble somehow. <laughs> it's just some. The problem is with that that I already expected that Earth would survive somehow because it's a fucking show that way. And then they pulled Earth gets destroyed. So. Yeah, I'm happy they did it, but I'm not happy that they did it, right? I, 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 I think I said this when I was reacting to Crest of the Stars. I'm happy when a show has the balls to do a thing that other shows won't do. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it does not make me happy that it happened. Like, I'd be happy... I think what I'm talking about is, like, yeah, in Crest of the Stars, Jinto is a main character. They've given me a flash forward of it, what it looks like his death scene. And it's like, well, there's a season after this, but it's a really short one. Would they have the balls to kill Jinto here and do a Lafayette only season after that? It's like, I don't know. I'd be happy if they did, just to have the balls to do it. But would I be happy with a season without Jinto? <laughs> it's like, no, I don't wouldn't be. But I'd st- so I'd be happy, but I'd be unhappy in my happiness. Same thing here. Am I happy that they killed the Earth? Well, in one aspect, yes. Not many shows have the balls to pull the gu- pull the trigger on a premise that they've set up. And I'm unhappy with all the shows that will check off his gun a thing and then, you know, pull a happy ending out of nowhere. But am I happy that the Earth is gone? No. So I'm happy in my unhappiness. Uh, Here's what I want to say about that. The thing is... This would be like a series finale, right? Like this would be like the last episode, right? You resolve everything and the earth is destroyed. And in another show, if you continue the show somewhere else, you see what happens like 10 years later or whatever. They kind of don't do that here. And that's, I think, to the week. That's the part where like, ah, okay. Because we're going to enter in a post-apocalyptic, like a post-end of story story. And those are difficult to pull off. So, um... Are we gonna get... Wallied? Maybe. The Macross lands, everyone gets off the ship, it's time to start rebuilding civilization on Earth. It's literally Wally, just with a war instead of pollution. Yeah. Also, I, wouldn't assume... I guess not as many I... fat people. Um... <laughs> uh... And uh, I think that maybe the the people who made Wally certainly watch Macross, at least some of them, anyway. Uh, but we get, it's it kind of re- this is not reminds me of what happened with Babylon Five. Like in season four, they wrapped up almost all the big things, right? The 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 Earth a Civil War, the Shadow War, and all that. And then you had the entire fifth season where we're like, oh yeah, uh, that. Yeah, I guess the you what know. was the name of the episode? Stars falling. Was a pretty yeah, amazing because, wrap up because it's the one that you the know, construction of falling stars. Yeah, yeah, the one where you jump ahead periods mm-hmm. of time to basically yeah. the end of the human race. But let's go back for season five to see what happens when you know who takes I over mean, command be... of the station. But the thing is about that though, in that specific example, is that JMS had more story to tell. He wasn't like prompted by the network to write more. He had more well, Babylon Five story. 
Yeah, that's true. But he didn't know if his show was going to get renewed for a fifth season. So that's why he wrapped it up in the fourth. I can't accept that as a thing because I know how creative GMS is. Not from all of his other shows, but like even stuff that he created for Babylon 5, like the whole trap door policy for characters. He had yeah, yeah, stuff I... in place for sp for specific events to happen. So he could have, even if he didn't know when the show was going to end, created ways for it to work. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was forced to anyway, because he continued, and he had some movies and stuff like that was going out out there, but uh, it was meant that a lot of the storylines of season four, like the Earth uh, Civil War, you know, War Against Earth, was going to continue into season five. So he he had a season five planned out, but he was forced to compress everything in season four because he thought, oh, you're going to get canceled. He said, well, might as well wrap it up here. The and irony is... Season five, well, the know. irony there is that a bunch of those storylines were also supposed to continue in Crusade, which did get canceled, so... I think only you have, like, half a season, right? It didn't get a full season. Yeah, it didn't get a full season. Plus, there's, um... I don't remember where it's at, but I remember I read them before. There's, like, notes about the the episode titles what the uh, th the episodes were supposed to be for the ones that didn't get filmed. Not all of them, mind you, but enough of them that you, you get the picture about what's going back on on Earth still, and what's the Psycor up to, and, you know, all this weird shit. Because yeah. it was supposed to go heavy into the whole Psycor human thing again. Yeah. I don't know, big fans of Babylon 5, obviously. I don't know. If you want more creative JMS writing, go watch the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Mm, yeah. It's, he had the most and involvement Captain, in that one. Yeah, Captain Power. Um, yeah. Captain Power, he was in He-Man and She-Ra, uh, Sense8, and he's done a lot. Yeah, but, yeah, but if, you look up, Man, yeah. if you look up his direct writing credits, or I guess, mm -hmm. I don't know, the real Ghostbusters had a real problem with writing credits, but I guess here in hindsight we've collected which ones he's done and whatnot. Uh, it's the one that he has the most writing on outside of Babylon 5. Yeah. I think like 80 episodes out of, what, 100, 200? Anyway, Macross. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess my problem is is that if next episode, or like even two episodes from now, we've built a new community or a new city on Earth, that's my, my benchmark. If we show up and like all of Earth is fine again two episodes from now, I will be pissed. But if even if two episodes from now, the Macross has landed and we've rebuilt Macross City on Earth or something, that is horrible oversight. Like, I would agree that we should end it like 20, maybe 28 episodes. Like, the next episode, it, we should have ended, and it's just, okay, well, now we're looking at a new future between humans and Trotty relations, and together we're going to try and rebuild the Earth. But that's a story for another Macross or something. You know, I don't know how you would dead end there, but it really feels like, okay, we're going to end there. And then we're going to make another pitch for another Macross series to the network and see if we can get green light on that. Yeah. Because I think this is about the same number of episodes that the original writers on Gundam got informed. You're getting canceled. You better start yeah. writing the end of the show. Yeah. All right. Well, you have any final thoughts to wrap this up with? Uh, I mean, I really like this episode overall um, because it's just, it goes fast. It has a lot of action. The animation that's top notch, right, for the series. And they, you know, they even see the little details on the, on the mechs and all of that. Uh, I mean, the fighting is cool. It's interesting, for example, that they take, you know, Hikaru is the hero, but they kind of take him out and he goes to save Misa. Right and let the the ship actually do the thing like the like the Macross becomes the hero of the show right like oh remember this is the SEF Macross the ship is a hero let's make it as a hero ship and just go in and blast everything like right? I so, almost completely yeah. forgot to mention the plot armor that Hikaru got this episode remember that time he almost died and had to spend like two episodes in a hospital when he got hit with half as many missiles as he did this time yeah I think well he. The way he did it was like he sacrificed his arm, so it took most of the explosions, right? But still, you know. Sure, sure. That explains it. Not the fact that, you know, the explosions would blow the arms away, and then the other half of the missiles would come in at you. That's true. 
Like you said, he got plot armored this episode because yeah, he's got to go talk to Misa. We've already dead ended the Minmay relationship, maybe. And now, now it's time for anybody that put their money on Misa as the end to get payoff. I don't know. There's a lot here. There's a lot, and we don't have the time to go over everything. All right, I think I'm just going to call it here. This is the wrap-up moment. <laughs> yeah, I have been much. Theta. This is Lessons. We've been Stoneface Reactions, and we will catch you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below, and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?